In the last episode, we took a look at color field painting, which many people find frustrating because they're seemingly lacking in context and narrative. So what about something that is on the completely opposite side of the spectrum? Something that is full of cultural reference, explicit ideas, and popular imagery? Well, apparently on this opposite end of the extreme, some people find it equally frustrating. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the pop art movement. Let's think about something for a moment. Historically, why did people find art valuable? Perhaps it's because they're unique and one of a kind. Perhaps it's because they were deemed by prestigious academies and wealthy individuals to be important. Perhaps it's because they're deeply contemplative and philosophical. Well, that's great and all, but some would argue that these ideals could lead to art being highly elitist and inaccessible to the masses, which in many cases, it did. And that's probably why, at some point, some people came, took a look at these ideals and went, screw all that. Now let's think about the 1950s, an era of film, television, advertisements, and mass-produced imagery on magazine covers, comic books, and newsstands. Many images were burnt onto people's collective consciousness through these media. And our culture became undoubtedly shaped by celebrities, consumer products, and big corporate brands. And whether you think that's a great thing or a devastating thing, artists saw this thing and they wanted to reflect this new reality. And that's why many of them highlighted the mass-produced and sensitive sensational nature of the mainstream media, like Andy Warhol making multiple copies of the same image over and over, or Odenberg's overt, larger-than-life depictions of decadence and food consumption. And by doing this, they called into question many of the established values of art, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Why does something have to be unique or limited in quantity in order to be considered valuable? Because clearly, many things that are carving out significant cultural impacts are precisely the opposite of that. Why should it be up to to the elite or academics to determine what is culturally significant or important. Doesn't culture belong to the masses and shouldn't we all get a say? And why do artworks always have to be deeply philosophical or contemplative or ask grand questions about life and the universe? Why can't a work of art just be cute, funny, or sexy? It has also been argued that many pop artists also aim to emphasize the harsh reality that art itself is a commodity. While there are some people who like to think art is some sort of special thing that sits beyond capitalism, many other people also think that those people probably live in some sort of utopian fantasy land not based in reality. So while there are some people who are busy labeling commercially successful artists as sellouts, some pop artists are kind of turning around at them and saying, well, what exactly exactly did you expect? Pop artists also brought attention to how other artistic practices such as filmmaking, packaging, brand design, performance, comic book illustration can be just as artistic, interesting, or sophisticated as high art pursuits such as painting and sculpting. Many pop artists would collaborate with creators across disciplines, such as artist Robert Rauschenberg collaborating with experimental musician John Cage as well as choreographer Merce Cunningham, or Andy Warhol collaborating with the band and the Velvet Underground, such as designing an album cover in 1967. This bridged the boundaries between artists, musicians, performers, and creators of all kinds. Leading to today, where an artist collaboration with a filmmaker, musician, or fashion designer seems pretty normal. And it's for some of these aforementioned reasons why some people didn't, and still to this day, don't take pop art seriously. They think it's gimmicky, ironic, and unserious. But one could also say, well, why can't art be gimmicky, ironic, or unserious? And let's face it, it's important for us to challenge the concept of cultural hierarchy. It's important to highlight the undoubted impact of mass culture. And it's important to democratize both the creation and consumption of art. Pop artists facilitated this discussion back in the 1950s and 60s, and these are conversations that continues to be had today. So what do you think? Do you think reproducing pop cultural images is just gimmicky and pointless? Or do you see value in bringing attention to our culture's collective consciousness and shared experiences. As always, let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.